Hello and welcome back to my channel for another clear and concise contraption compaction challenge. Now this week we've got the Twindo. Now I was going to do the Twindo and the fish tank in one, but they are distinctly different. I'd say the fish tank slightly easier, but then um yeah we're going to start with the with the Twindo. Now let's see it in action before we could do anything else. So yeah, you press the button and slowly but surely the TV expand extends from the from the wall, close it, uh, fill in the gap. So we've got a television in the space. Oh, and then the chairs pop up, but then that's a really simple sort of um, circuit. So today I'm not even going to bother doing this because this is the complicated part of the circuit. So we're going to make that the um, make that the the subject of today's video. Now we will go downstairs and take a look how I did it on this version. Okay, so basically here we are now. The, how I've done it differently on the other one, I've still gone with this piston feed tape. You probably won't know what I'm talking about at the minute. Another really, as I said, another clear and concise contraption compaction challenge. But yeah, and in tradition, I may as well come down here and waffle incoherently at things that you can't even possibly understand. But yeah, how I did it on this one is basically, it's a, all based on a piston feed tape that is a one-two piston feed tape, which means it goes goes into one channel for a little bit and and all, uh, yeah and then into two on the other ones now you could do a three by one piston feed tape but what you'd have to do is you'd have to do a triple piston extender down here instead of a double piston extender now these types of piston feed tapes do take a little bit longer we'll go see my example in a sec but the mistake i made on this one that slowed that down even more than it had to be was the fact that i was running the signals off this redstone thing here so when we go and have a look on the other one, just remember this is, I'll, show, I'll explain a bit more clearly. But this array here is just a load of, um, oh, I want to say T flip-flops. They're not. These are leading edge monostables that just let off pips off down here to tell the machine to that it's ready to go across, you know, to ready to move the next chunk into across the window. Yeah, another fantastic explanation. Anyway, let's go and have a look at my other world, shall we? Okay, so what you see before you here is this thing down here is the actual test piece contraption that I'm going to describe to you. Um, placed unnecessarily close to it is just a demonstration of a 1-2 piston feed tape. Now, let's go have a look at this, this unnecessarily close piston feed tape. What we've got here is basically, it's like a normal feed tape. Piston feed tape, you'd have one going out like this, so... It would just be really, instead of having two pistons like this and a double piston extender there, it would just be pistons like that. And the setup would be very similar to that. You would have an observer looking down like that that would observe movement along the, along the piston feed tape itself. And then another observer that would be looking into that observer that would then tell this one that something has happened over here and that something is in this place to then spit down there. Now, actually, for me, that wasn't too bad an explanation. So, yeah, you always have got to remember it's the same as a normal piston feed tape where it's it's got no um, it's got it's not missing a gap in one corner. It's filled. And that's the one that you power it from. So if we have a look, I've put this in there so that we can see it move. So if we see it, it just gets moved across that gets pushed down. If can you see it's a bit it takes a bit longer than a normal piston extender because we've got double piston extensions that need to happen here instead of everything being single piston extensions but yeah and it just keeps on going now if i push it all the way down to the end there oh, right now one more and it should go up there we go and it starts going up the one thing you've got to make sure on these though is it needs to be an even number going up here. Where I say it needs to be an even number. It needs to be a number that divides by the thickest, the thickest wedge, if you see what I mean. So if this was three, it would either have to it would have to be versions of three. So it would have to be three, six, or nine pushing up there. You can yeah, you could go twelve, couldn't you? Yeah, because it's a twelve push limit. But yeah, it's um you have to bear that in mind. But then um but yeah, so that's the basic layout of this of this piston feed tape, which is quite a unique sort of layout for a piston feed tape. But yeah, it's a nice little design and it allowed me to do this because if I used other piston feed tapes, I'd either need a space here. I mean with the fish tank, that's what I used. I used a regular pit like um barrel of piston feed tapes that basically just cycled around this sort of area here allowing the glass to come up and well yeah we'll talk about that at some other point anyway but 
yeah let's have a look at this one then so now as i said um this has been sped up somewhat this is a lot better um, um function now than what it was i mean i've still managed to get the piston feed tape you can barely see it in here if the piston feed tape can you see part of the tv's part of it and if i just rip this out you can see that this is the bottom row and then it goes up there yeah you can see where it goes on this and that's the television there ready to go in uh and yeah and these are just the magenta ones are the um, piston feed tape block so if you see magenta that's part of the piston feed tape so let's just go have a look shall we so yeah let's give it a little test so this one i believe is slightly quicker than the other one it's much less messy it's a lot easier for me to explain to you what's going to get what's going on as well and as we all know i'm not the best at explanations so yeah this is best i make it easy on myself but yeah it's a lot quicker now so let's just push it back again now i was going to say as well i had to build the piston flea tape slightly um slightly different i mean that's got a one block profile that one i had to go with the two block profile now the reason was i had problems um with the observer blocks and now if if i didn't mind the observer blocks being here observing what's going on along these rows here and the same over here then i could have built it precisely the same as it is up there but um and, and i was tempted to do that because what i could have done is put um blocks across the top and blocks across the bottom and then put stair blocks there and there and the same on the other side and it would look more of a rounded hole that the tv would just slot into the middle of but then um yeah i decided to go with this because it just looks a bit more clean and it wasn't really that much of a fix it was just a matter of coming out around the sides there and coming up instead of um having the observer block there looking down and then an observer block coming that way i had to do it so it was like that and came up over the top so yeah it's, it's just a tiny little fix and yeah it was reasonably easy so what we've got going on here as I, as I said, uh, magenta block is the piston feed tape itself. And obviously these are parts of the television. Um, and then the purple blocks are the circuitry for uh, the piston feed tape itself. I know it gets confusing. That's where the confusion gets in with that. That's nothing to do with it. So ignore that. Everything in that field of view there. right? So um, yeah, anything purple is part of the piston feed tape. So first off, I needed to make a clock and timer a timed pulse emitter basically which is what this red running is which is a combination of two contraptions two circuits um one being the pulse uh, pulse extender which is that one that's a long pulse extender which saves room you saw pulse extenders on my other build um on on my other build over here we've got i could have got an example over here now this is a short pulse extender that's all good and good this is all good for lengthening a pulse a little bit but I need to length the pulse quite a bit, quite a long bit. So instead of doing huge reams of that sort of um, pulse extender, I did this. So basically what happens is, is this comes down and then goes back up again. But then when it, when it touches this, comparators read water in, in, in cauldrons. So what that does is it then lights up here, telling this to push across to here. Now what these have got, I think this has got the, it's got 20 bits of, what, you can put whatever in there, it doesn't matter, it just needs to be an object. But what happens is when that lights up, that pushes that across over to here. Then all of this stuff starts flooding into here. So what happens is then this powers, which powers this one, which then powers this one. But because this one's pushed across, it can't, it can't push it back again. Because this one's pushed across is because this is fired. And um, yeah, it's a, it's a hard one to explain this. But then, um, yeah, once then basically what happens is once this is emptied, then then this one will push this back across there allowing this to all flow back into there and then once all that has flowed back into there this piston will then return back to there because this once this is empty this will no longer be getting a signal which means this will no longer be getting powered which resets the system it's, it's uh, I, I, another great explanation by me i know but then um yeah as i was saying let's just move on to the next bit shall we paste over that bit but that's how you do that bit okay so now it comes on to this bit and now i've tried to explain this three times and i'm doing it really awfully i'm i'm a terrible uh, this has been a heavily edited video by the way i just can't bring myself to explain this properly this is a this basically the 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 current slowly loses its signal 
So eventually when this bit loses its signal, that eventually goes off, which allows that to suddenly let's let a bit more of a, a tick through. And yeah, basically it basically just lets out ticks very slowly. So tick, 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 tick. It's a lot easier for me to explain these like this, but then um these these circuits, by the way, I think this one I learned. Oh, I think both of these were learned from Il Mango. If you go look at Il Mango's clocks and um stuff like that, yeah, clocks and pulse extenders, Il Mango is kind of the um the guru on them sort of things. He knows every single way there is. Um, but yeah, so that was that was the fantastic explanation of the red circuit. So now we're going to move on to the the pink circuit. Sorry, we should, we should probably say about this orange circuit over here because we saw it come out of this one. So as this um, pulse extender is doing its thing, this orange circuit comes down here and goes to one of these falling edge monostables. Now, what this falling edge monostable does is once this has all done its magic, so once that has has had its eight pulses it within the uh, within the limit, you know that's pulsed pulsed all the way across. This um, this falling edge monostable does its thing and lets out a zero tick pulse into this block here, which activates this sticky piston, which basically swaps this block around here. Now this block here, this is just like an uh, like an alternator. It, it, it diverts the current down um, different paths depending on which way you want the TV to be pu pushing. So at the minute it's um, the windows out. So um, if we push the button now, it would be wanting to push the window, push the TV in. So these would be the, the functions going. So it comes off down this one and because there's, it would light this one up, but because there's nothing for it to channel through, it won't light this one up. So the, the, the power source comes down through here up across here and powers that one which then tells the piston feed tape to push the tv out then when it gets to the end of there because obviously that will light the the falling edge monostable down here will all be activated and primed ready to let out the zero tick pulse so when that turns off and that's obviously pushed out into its thing this piston will suck that across so that next time i press that button all of this function will channel off down this run here up down here down here and power this one which then powers these pistons the double piston extension which pushes them up so obviously that one won't won't run this time because otherwise it would just push out a strip of magenta block but yeah and that's basically the the function of it now now i am going to apologize again for a really uh tatty um explanation there but then i've been trying to rush through this as well because i did find i had some real troubles editing the video in that one uh, the video was just a little bit too long and my computer is not quite powerful enough to edit the longer videos. So I'm trying to keep this video nice and short so that I can actually actually chop the video in places. I was very much guesswork. I was having to edit that based on the audio audio signatures and it was very hard indeed. So yeah, hopefully I should. But yeah, as before, I'm going to put in the description all the sort of people that I'm going to appeal to because there are some amazing redstoners out there. Um, but yeah, and if you know anyone that likes a bit of redstone, this is a very easy one. This this is this is really is not not that hard at all. And and the the to fish tank which I'm going to do next is even easier. But then um but yeah, and I know exactly how I'm going to go about my attempt to compact in this because obviously there's a big mass there and there's a big space here. So it's it's just a matter of shuffling around until you find a nice little setup. But then, um, but yeah, so good luck with this one, guys. Until next week, I've been Beardy Blocks. Goodbye. Beardy Blocks. <laughs>